Hey guys, back again, and here we are looking at, well, a small one. We're looking at Gundam F91. He's a very small guy, and I think all of them are starting to suffer being flimsy. Yeah, I think this one is starting to suffer being flimsy now because he doesn't. He's not really wanting to stand up. Which is sad though because. I think that's mainly due to my part because. I let him stay on his action base. Well, it's not an action base. Well, it sort of is. It's more or less a display base. Now, I will mention one thing about this one, because he's one of the few ones I know of. Uh, Unicorn Gundam is also in the same boat, where they don't use polycaps. It's all ABS plastic at the joints, too. Now, he has a firm, flat footprint, but... It's just, he does not want to stand. And he won't stand at all. So, in terms of stickers, all the stickers is on him. He doesn't come with much. You got the front camera. And, sadly, this might become a thing where parts just pop off. And that's going to probably be annoying, too. You got the front camera. You got the eyes. And you got the back of the camera, too. But I think that sticker popped off. And, sadly, the other yellow piece popped off, too. Because... Oh, it just happened to and that's like and it's a small piece too that's a small piece and that's hard to find too <laughs> but he doesn't come with much stickers and everything so let's go ahead and get into articulation because the articulation on him is good even for something so small, but there is a downside to this. So, for articulation, the head goes, well, it's up and down, forwards and backwards, and it can rotate. It can go 360, but you might be pushing it, unless you take off the head, the head piece. Yes, his head comes off. You can use this to push the eyes, I mean, not the eyes, push this face guard up, and behind it feels like rotate around and you have like the open face but I'm not gonna force it because every time I try it it always ruins that sticker unless you just like well no not even doing that well there you go and I don't recommend doing that too many times because like I said it can ruin that sticker And now this head does not want to, it's not pressing down. There you go. So you have the open face. And like I said, I'd be careful with doing this because it can ruin the sticker. If you're not careful. So there's that. The arms. Come on. They rotate 360. The shoulders go up that far. Arms go up that far. They ro they rotate below the shoulder. And rotate at the elbows. Because these are actually pegged in. Like I said, if this is ABS. I'm not sure if they could have done like normal. Like they did with like, I don't know, something like Double O or Freedom it normally but this is what they chose and sadly this is the same thing they did with the double zeta I'm surprised that even full armor too I'm surprised that their hands can actually their arms still actually hold the stuff up and that's ABS on ABS too the hands are 2.0 style hands so we got rotation they bend backwards well this one can't because of the uh the shell generator. But they've been, they've moved around and they got the, uh, all of them are ball jointed. 
the cockpit. Back to the torso, though. The cockpit, it does open, and there's your Seabook Arno inside. The torso is double ball jointed, and this is the same way they did Wing Zero and the Proto Zero. So you got the ball joint at the top and at the bottom, so you get a nice range of motion in there. He can't go 360, but he can go side to side, and these things are most annoying. They pop off too easily. Front skirts, we have that inner frame sort of on there, which is protruding through, and they come up pretty far forward. Side skirts, they move. This one actually hinges outwards. The inside does, and you got beam sabers in there. But we'll get into that no. when we do the accessories. This one doesn't hinges out, but they are just pegged in. And you have the uh, another shield generator in there, which he used like a bomb, like a grenade in the movie, like just toss it and let it hit somebody. Back skirt moves a little bit, and this does open up. Like I'm just gonna remove these because uh, it's gonna probably be in the way. Okay, well I didn't mean to do that. No, let that happen, but okay, that works. Yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, it's been some time though, it's been years since I had him built and everything. Oh, oh no, you don't. This is dangerous because that's you may think this is a polycap. And it just okay, so back to that, putting that piece back in. You slide this down and lift this up. And you open this, and you can actually store the uh, his bazooka in there. And I think he's the first one that had a bazooka. Well, actually, I'm not sure if it's a bazooka or not. I think it's like another cannon, like a high energy cannon or something that he uses. And now the torso. Now that's coming apart. But that's pretty much what it is. Like right down the inside. And you also have a track too. For this. Okay. It's just trying to get everything to line up and stay in place. His legs are double jointed and they bend. Kinda stiff there. Like I said, this is all ABS plastic. So I'm a little terrified something might break, but I'm hoping it doesn't. Uh, the hips, they swivel, they go forwards and back and outwards. So it's pretty much like a peg. Um, Pegging into the hips, pegging into the um, the waist, and he is just falling apart. And this is what happens when you let age get to them, get the better of them. <laughs> Ankles, um, there's side to side, forward and backwards, but there's also piston action. He's one of the few that actually has real pistons action going in there. And you can kind of see it like right there. There's pistons in there. And you do got to make sure when you build this, you make sure that the bottom ones are smooth so that they can go in there and fit. Otherwise, you're going to have a hard time with this feet. Jesus. Hey, you guys, can you just stand for like five minutes? Jesus. Now everything wants to pop off and move and he wants to fall over. And he's supposed to be a stiff one too because he's all ABS, but I guess not. But next up we're going to look at the weapons and accessories. So for his weapons and accessories, first off, you get the action bit. You get a display base, which is more or less in the image of the Reflesia. 
Um, is nice molded red, and you do have these pieces you stick in, and you do get this green wire. It's just two wires, but you're supposed to run through and around. So I think you attach something else to it. Look like they're flying off. Like his little wire guided uh, funnels or whatever it was. I can't remember, but you have that. You have the energy shield. And this is the one I'm pretty sure of that you just um, um, squeeze it on. Unlike Strike Freedoms, which I try to do, and then I was using the wrong one. This one is the one you can actually just wedge in there. And I'm. Let's try this. And just lay you down. So you do. It does come out. That little peg. Just you gotta push it out. Okay, you don't want to come out, but you go in. Why are you being awkward? There we go. Push out. And let's go ahead and reconnect this back on. Like I said, reconnect. And take the shield and just... Actually, I'm going to just take this off for now. And just, you wedge it on. See? You wedge it on. There's your energy shield. And then... You can plop this back on his arm. And boom. Energy shield. You know, that arm is starting to get annoying. I forgot. I gotta keep it pull, get that part pulled out so the arm can I actually sit a little bit outwards from it. Otherwise, it's just going to bump into that. So, let's go take that out. Um, next up, we have are his beam sabers. He has lime green ones to kind of match up with his shield. You know, I don't put them all to get all beam sabers together. I have them each uh, coordinated and colored to go to whichever series or however how many ever I put in that series. Like all my strikes, I put them together, so I see like one set of beam sabers in there, and I see like a whole bunch of other parts. So I know that this is the strike bag. Actually, it would be like all the strike, strike, strike rouge, remastered. Then I got like my freedoms and another bag with the that's gonna be have the justice and providence. So I'm already expecting to see a lot of beam sabers in there. So you got the two uh, green ones, and like I said, you got the uh, beam sabers handle stored in here. They just kind of pop out. And you turn them. And these are small, but you can pull them out. You also have the VSBRs uh, stored on them. They swing out. And there's a handle here. Well, this is like the primary handle. And then you have another handle up here that you can pop out if you was going to leave these ones folded in a store and VSBR stands for variable speed beam rifle and you got two of those and they just slide on the track and they work really well Uh, what else am I missing? Oh, right. Here we go. You have the beam rifle. It's two colors. There's a peg in it. I mean, there's a hole in the hand. And he could hold this really well, though. He also got an extra handle. 
you can't really store this though, but who needs to store it? There's no stickers on it. So if you're expecting to see a sticker on it, uh, sorry. Then you have this beam launcher. This thing is fairly nice. The handle down here moves a bit. So you can adjust it. No real like it doesn't really have a good mounting point on the shoulder or anything. It just kinda like rests there in his hands and you just gotta work with it. And this is the one that you can actually store on his back and the store point will be right here between in this little bar section right here. You'll store it like right there. And I think that covers everything for him. I mean, he comes with a lot, and due to his size and everything, he is on the cheaper side too. So, I think he runs around like 3,800 yen. So, you will be paying like a decent price for him. So, that's it, and I'll see you guys with the next one.